Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really powerful new Android device from Nubia known as the Red Magic 7. I've had this in my possession for the last two weeks. I've been testing it out and yeah, I mean, this is the most powerful Android phone that I've ever messed around with and next year we'll have something with even more power. That's how technology works, but as it sits right now, this thing is an absolute powerhouse. I mean, with the chip we have here, the amount of RAM, the screen, and the cooling system, I've been able to throw absolutely anything at it, and it handles it without breaking a sweat. I believe they also include a silicone case here, uh, something that you probably want to throw on it, but later on down the road, you can always get a better case for it. This will protect the back from being scratched up. And Nubi is actually offering three different color variants of the Red Magic 7. Now with each color variant, you're going to get a couple different specs here. But we have the Supernova with 18 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. I do love the Supernova look because we have that transparent back. But when it comes to these three color variants, I opted for the Pulsar and I think this is the best looking one. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, which is more than enough for a device like this. And they're also offering the Obsidian model with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. But we have that same CPU and cooling system, plus that 165 hertz AMOLED display on all three of these devices. And if you do end up picking one of these phones up, you're going to get a 65 watt power supply, your USB type C cable. They've also thrown in that silicone case, which we've taken a look at, and the Red Magic 7 itself. Now, like I mentioned, this thing is an absolute powerhouse, and we're going to run some benchmarks, test out some native Android gaming, and emulation on this thing. But before we jump into that, I want to give you a quick walk around, and we're also going to go over the specs. But over here on the right-hand side, we have our two shoulder triggers, which we find on most of these Red Magic devices. These come in really handy. You can program them, and they're basically physical touch buttons. And you might notice we have a vent over here because this is actively cooled. It's got a 20,000 RPM fan along with the nine layer cooling system built into this device. On the bottom here, we have our speaker grate, our USB type C port, and our SIM card tray. Unfortunately, these Red Magic devices do not support a micro SD card. So if you need more storage, you're going to have to buy one with more storage. Over here on the left hand side, we have our volume rocker. We've got some more ventilation for that built in fan. And we also have a Red Magic switch. This will bring us into the Red Magic space. And this gives us a lot of different options for our games and applications. We can tweak and tune the performance of the built in chip. And if you're into tinkering, this is a really awesome little setup they have on the Red Magic devices. And finally, up top here, they have left us with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So if you're looking for a powerful device that still comes with a headphone jack, then the Red Magic 7 might be for you. Now it's time for my favorite part, the specs of this device, because uh, when it comes down to it, they have loaded this thing down. For the CPU, we have the all new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. A lot of people were complaining about this overheating in smaller devices, and I could definitely see that happening. But in the Red Magic 7, with that active cooling, we can go all day long with maximum performance out of this new chip. And it is an absolute beast. Since we have the new Gen 1, it's using the Arduino 730 GPU. 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM, 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage, a 6.8 inch AMOLED 165 hertz display, 700 nits of brightness, and 100% DCI-P3. 4500 milliamp hour battery with 65 watt quick charging capabilities, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and this device does support display over USB Type-C, so you can connect an HDMI adapter, or if your monitor or TV supports USB Type-C display, you can plug it right in and get that bigger screen experience. The first thing I wanted to take a look at was Red Magic Time, also known as Red Magic Game Space. I'm not sure of the official name. Click this little switch here, it's going to bring us over into the menu. I'm going to plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at it. And from here, we have a couple different views. So right now, I'm just kind of in the wall view. I've got all of my applications loaded up that I want to load through Red Magic Time. If we tap this little icon in the bottom right hand corner, it'll bring up a little bit of a different view. But overall, kind of really like this wall view. Just gives me more apps to choose from at one time. Now from within here, we can actually turn the fan on. We can turn it off. I like having it on, especially when I'm doing games like Genshin Impact or Emulation. It does keep that Gen 1 nice and chilly. Up at the very top, if we tap on this little person, gives us some more settings from within here and just gives us the Red Magic Time. Time played per game through Red Magic Time. But all the good stuff is inside of a game once you start it up. So I'm just going to go with something simple. We'll do Minecraft real quick. If I swipe over from the left hand side, you can see that we have a ton of different settings we can mess around with. And one of the main settings that I like using 
is right over here. We're in rise mode and what this is going to do is give us the maximum performance out of the CPU and the GPU side of things with this Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. We can also go to balance mode and this is great for lower end games, give you a bit more battery life or eco which uh, I guess if you're just doing video playback or something like that, or even just playing kind of a, you know, a tap game, I would go with Eco. We're not going to need that much power for those type of games. But something like Genshin Impact or even the PS2 emulator, definitely set it up for Rise. Now it's going to give us a warning. We're in high gear mode right now, so this is going to get a bit hotter because those CPU and GPU clocks will be bumped up. From here, we can also set the refresh rate of the screen. I'm going to go to 165. We've also got our screen recorder. We can set up Do Not Disturb, change the brightness and things like that. But over on the left hand side, we do have some plugins that actually work really well with a lot of these games. Sight Assist is one of those that's going to give us a little dot in the middle of the screen. Great for shooters. Some people call this cheating on Android devices. I actually really like the fact that they do have this built in. For me, when it comes to like Call of Duty Mobile, I do use this quite a lot. So we'll shut that down. Back to plugins, we've got our sound effects. Gives us a nice little equalizer here. You can adjust this to your liking. You have to turn it on and off from here. From plugins, there's also a macro application which allows us to kind of pre-program taps and you know swipes on the screen. But this can definitely come in handy depending on the game you're using. For something like Minecraft, the only thing I turn on is that high gear mode and I also have my performance on screen. Now if we tap this little performance, you'll see it right up here and we can just go with the FPS if you want to do that or if you want let's say your battery percentage or all of them at once. Usually I just leave that FPS on and this is a real-time FPS counter. So if you get in the gameplay here, it comes to Minecraft this is one of those games that only runs at up to 120 Hertz but I do have that FPS counter on screen. We're in high gear mode otherwise known as rise mode. Got that fan going. And as you can see, this runs Minecraft just fine at 120 FPS. By the way, I do have fancy graphics on, and chunks are set to 20 right now. One game that definitely runs at 165 Hz from Google Play is Real Racing 3. It's been on the market for a while, not a super hard game to run, but it does take quite a bit to run it at 165 FPS. And this will do it all day long, especially since we have that built-in cooling fan. We don't have to worry about thermal throttling on this device. And another one I wanted to show off here was Genshin Impact. I'm not using the built-in screen recorder, so we're not taking away any kind of CPU or GPU performance. This is plugged in through HDMI or USB Type-C to HDMI. And with this, I'm at very high settings with MSAA turned off. That's one of those that I usually always like to turn off, that and Bloom, but with this little chip here, I left Bloom on. We're getting 60 FPS every once in a while when there's lots of particles on screen or that shader hasn't cached yet, you will see it dip down. But overall, I'm getting amazing performance with Genshin Impact on this device. And the same goes for every other native Android game that I've thrown at this device. Call of Duty Mobile, 90 FPS. I, I guess that's the cap. I'm not sure if you can get 120. But this will do very high settings, 90 FPS with Call of Duty Mobile also. So the next thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks on the Red Magic 7 versus the Galaxy S21. When it comes to Geekbench 5, as you can see, the Snapdragon 888 really isn't that far off from the Gen 1. I mean, we do have a little uptick on the single core and the multi-core with the Gen 1. But where the real performance jump comes in is the GPU on that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Here's 3D Mark Wildlife. This tests the Vulcan performance of the GPU. We're at 10,000 on the Red Magic 7 and 5,400 on the S21. And the final benchmark I ran was Antutu. On the Red Magic 7, we're over a million points with Antutu, and if you take a look at that GPU score, we're at 448,000 there. And with the S21, with that Snapdragon 888, total score 632,893. Now it's time to take a look at some emulation of the Red Magic 7, and this was really impressive. You might notice some banding with the screen. This is not visible to the naked eye, it's just my camera's frame rate trying to keep up with the frame rate of the screen. Here's Dreamcast using the Redream emulator, and we're totally maxed out here. I'm at the highest resolution, which is 3890 by 2880, and it's going to run these games at 60 FPS. 
Next up, we have some 3DS using Citra. This uses the OpenGL back end. And with Tekken, I'm at 4X. And even with Mario Kart 7, I can run this at 4X at 60 FPS. I mean, we're getting some really good 3DS emulation performance with this chipset. Moving over to the Dolphin emulator for some GameCube and Wii. Here we have F-Zero GX, one of the harder ones to emulate, especially on ARM devices. And with this setup here, I'm using the Vulcan back end at 1080p. I mean, this is really, really impressive. I did try OpenGL, and really the highest I could go was 720p, and even then I still had some stutters. But with the Vulcan back end and multi-threaded rendering turned on with the Dolphin emulator, this is some of the best GameCube performance that I've seen out of an ARM device so far. I mean, this is really, really great. I also wanted to throw at least one Wii game at it, so here we have Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, one of my favorite games. Vulcan back in, 1080p with multi-threaded rendering on, and that works with the Vulcan back in. I do notice a few shader stutters every once in a while, but with the way I have it set up right now, I'm using specialized shaders, and I'm not skipping them, so you will see that until it's cached in the memory. And the final emulator I wanted to test for this video was Ether SX2 for PS2. Here we have God of War 2, OpenGL back in, 2x resolution. I was really hoping we could go up to 3x here, but I did get some dips every once in a while with OpenGL and Vulkan at 3x, at least with this game. And in the future, there's a chance with more optimizations done to this emulator, we'll be able to run this at 3x and maybe higher with Vulkan or OpenGL. But right now, 2x is the way to go with this device, and it works great. But when I moved over to Gran Turismo 4, I was able to take this up to 4X. And in the rally stages, I could go up to 5X with it, which does look really, really well. And if you take a look, I do have all of my stats on screen right now. So you know we're really at 4X with this game using that OpenGL back in. Really, really impressive performance out of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So overall, when it comes to the Red Magic 7, this is the most powerful Android phone that I've tested so far. And we will see more powerful ones come down the road. That's just how it works. I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. Recently, I did a video on the Moto X30, which has the same chip, but no active cooling. And it can definitely thermal throttle after a while, and it takes those clocks on the CPU and the GPU down to keep it cooler. With this having active cooling built in, you can play these all day long. I mean, this little fan does spin up at 20,000 RPM. It's got that nine layer cooling setup in it, and it does an absolutely amazing job cooling this Gen 1 off. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. I will have a full emulation video coming up because there's a ton of stuff that I want to test on this device. I really want to show it off over HDMI. It does 1080p 60 out of USB Type-C, which is plenty for emulation and this little chip can definitely handle it, as you saw with what we tested in this video. But I do have more coming, and if there's anything else you want to see running on the Red Magic 7, let me know in the comments below. If you want to learn more, maybe pick one of these up. I'll leave a link in the description. But that's it for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.